you know, good reporters, you know, obviously know their subject. And here is a guy who grew up in Omaha, played sports in Omaha in high school, and then went on to cover sports in Omaha. So there was, he was a part of a lot of different things. So the background was built in to, to what was going on. Um, and over time, you become an authority on what you're covering. And that, you know, as a journalist, that's really good to have all the background. A lot of things he probably knew more better than the people he was writing about. So that really helps, you know, us as a, a news gathering organization to put people like Piv out there and let them do what they do best. And, you know, he was so trustworthy and hardworking knew so many different people and um, was a tough, tough guy. He was tough. I mean, he would work, and I'm sure his family would vouch for this, he worked long, long hours, um, but he was so dedicated to, to the readers um, and it's, he kind of helped develop that culture that so many of us here have, the, the dedication to the people that pick up the paper every day. You gotta be there for them. And, you know, I remember talking to Piv at all hours when he's, you know, maybe Rath said something, you know, about driving down highways around the Missouri Valley. And this guy was always out doing stuff. And that's what made him really great. And he was just so dedicated to this newspaper and the people he knew want, he wanted to read about what was going on. Piv got sick this year, and this was the first time since I've worked here that we didn't have Piv at the College World Series. Um, so when we went through and redid all of our assignments, I found myself literally putting two people in for where Piv was doing it as a single person. Um, and I kind of always, you know, you know, you're teasing, you're doing the work of two people, Piv. Well, he literally was when you actually look at the assignment sheets. Um, so, you know, the, the, the output obviously is a, is a loss, um, which is obviously secondary to the person. But still, I mean, there was literal, literally he was doing the work of two people oftentimes. So. He was very close to the Creighton basketball. And he, he obviously would want to travel all the time. Um, so I caught myself many times um, watching for Piv along press row at games, and sure enough, there he is. And when you'd see him during a game, he had his head down writing. Now, that's, that's hard to do. Here with deadlines, you have to write, oftentimes you have to write a game story during the game. Um, and if your deadline is later, you have the opportunity to work all the good stuff in it, the quotes and things like that. But Piv has done this so long um, that he would be writing as the game was going on and, and, and making it, and that's hard to do because you have to make a good story out of that. Um, and as soon as the game was over, he would hit send and we would get it and we would get it up online. And then he'd write another one later. But you know, this is, it's kind of standard operating procedure but it's really hard to do. And he has done that so many times um, that you, you had faith that you were going to get a good report on that first blast. Um, and I would watch him from my living room, um, him you know, writing during the last minutes of a game from who knows where. I'm like, there's Pitt. Yeah. Well, whenever I could see him, he was always working. That's just the way he looked, you know? And that made our job a lot easier. Well, as you know, doing what we do, what you do, it's long hours and it's hard. Piv, when he started here, there's really two sides to the operation. There's the writing and editing side, and then there's a whole bunch of people that never get their names in the paper that put the paper together. And he did that, you know, when he first started. He was part of that desk crew, and he would do both at some points. Now I wasn't here, but people talk about it. How much and how hard it was back then before all the technology. He was a very important part about 
getting the paper out before all the benefits of technology, which was really hard and really, really stressful. And we had lots of editions rolling through and the press was running all the time and they were doing pay stuff, right? Um, no paginating, pay stuff. And write throughs on different stories. And the person in charge of that, I mean, it's, it's very stressful. Mm -hmm. He was really, according to all the people that have told me, he was great at it. And when that was done, or before he would do that, he'd be out covering stuff as well. So he learned, when this, I mean, it's hard now, but then it was really hard, really, really hard. So I always thought, well, this guy knew, knew what it was like 40 years ago. This is a walk in the park. It really wasn't, but he knew how hard it could be. So he always kept that in perspective, and he was just so solid, you know? And I think that's one reason why. He's like, well, young guy, this is, you got it pretty easy compared to what I had it like, right? Mm -hmm. So you could always depend on him, and he was just, you know, as I said earlier, so honest and dependable that you knew what he was gonna do, and he'd, he'd do what he said, and he had such a good relationship with his sources, and so much respect with uh, coaches around the country, literally now with the College World Series. I mean, everybody knew Piv, right? So. Well, it'll be hard. It'll be hard for a couple reasons. We will miss him as, you know, obviously as a friend. Um, just, he, you know, he would bring a smile to your face, you know, because he was fun. He, he told, he didn't just write good stories, he told good stories in here, and he liked to tell me stories. Um, and I like listening to it. Um, but like everything, you know, the newspaper will go on, and, and we will regroup, and we will make him proud. Um, you know, this was so important to him. And we would be doing him a disservice if we did anything less, right? So, um, so we'll we'll work and go forward with his, him in our memories. A lot of people will <laughs> there'll be a lot of Piv stories floating around for a long time, and we'll keep that alive. There's no doubt. It's kind of a tough day for the Creighton family. Yeah. I guess uh, you know I saw the statement and everything you guys put out, but just thoughts on, on Piv and your interactions with him and, and what he's meant to this program. Well, first of all, we lost a good friend, and you know. In, in this business, you have interactions with a lot of people and you have relationships with a lot of people, but you don't have a lot of friends. And Pivy was a friend of mine, and I was honored to call him a good friend, but he was also a friend of athletics. In, in athletics, uh, you can't be, have great success without having great passion, great talent, and I think great character, and, and, and Steve had all three. I mean, he was a tremendous husband, father, family man, uh, but a great friend. But he was passionate about what he did. Uh, and passion means that you do things that you don't have to do. And Steve did a lot of things in his job he didn't have to do. Uh, he was very intelligent and talented as a writer and he had high character. And uh, because of that, he was unique and, and we'll miss him dearly. Do you have uh, any memories from, from you know, your first interactions with him and, and how your relationship grew over the years? Well, I don't know if, I can't remember what I had for breakfast yesterday. So, uh, but the, the first thing I remember with Steve was when he got reassigned to Creighton Athletics when Rick Johnson was our men's basketball coach. We played a game down in Wichita and uh, we, we got beat. Uh, that would be kind. Uh, I waited for him after the game, he wrote his story, and then um, uh, we started back from Wichita to Omaha about one in the morning, and we ran into heavy fog in northern Kansas, so he was hanging out one side of the car, and I'm at the, hanging out the other side trying to see the lines on the side and in the middle of the road going about 10 miles an hour at four in the morning, and uh, when we finally got clear of the fog, uh, we had a great conversation the rest of the way about life and everything in life, and that was really, uh, that, that's a good description of Steve Pivovar. You know, he, he was more than just a reporter. Uh, he, was a, he was a great person and a great friend. When you think about, uh, you know, journalists in this career and covering the programs, the teams and everything, you know, you have a lot of people that come and go, uh, but he's been, you know, really 
the, the central guy now for a long time. Yeah. Um, and has served you guys, you know, for a lot yeah. of years. So, what does it, you know, what does it mean, you know, for, for his family to know that your support uh, is with, you know, the team that, uh, that he covered and loved for so long? Well, first of all, you know, I think that the family understands what kind of person Steve was. But sometimes your family doesn't understand what other people think of you. And uh, I, I would want the family to know just how important he was to Creighton Athletics. And not just Creighton Athletics, but College World Series. I mean, teams look forward to, him, to having him around. He was passionate about it. Uh, I think loyalties developed when you do things that you don't have to do, and Steve made a lifetime habit of doing things that he didn't have to do, so he has tremendous loyalty from a huge number of people. I guess, how do you describe Neil to people who don't understand athletics and who maybe isn't an athlete and they don't understand sports? How do you understand his impact you know, on Creighton and these athletes just by writing? Well, reporters are supposed to be neutral, and sometimes in athletics we look at reporters as an inconvenience, uh, sometimes even as a catastrophe. But uh, uh, Steve was one of those guys that because of the way he handled it, because of the fact that he was there when he didn't have to be, he was there early, he was there late, he saw and heard a lot of things that he could have reported on that he didn't. He never betrayed a confidence. He never made anybody look bad. He was very, very professional in the way he did things. And when somebody handles their life that way, I think that they have a tremendous impact on others.